In this series, we are going to focus on the thyroid nodule, and by the conclusion of this series, you will have mastered this algorithm that we have pictured here in the center of the presentation. However, before we dive into this algorithm, we first need to review what a thyroid nodule is, as well as the modalities that we have at our disposal in order to work up this finding. Additionally, as we work through this series, make sure to keep in the back of your mind why we are working up these thyroid nodules in the first place, as really ultimately what we are most concerned about and trying to rule out is the presence of thyroid cancer. We discuss these specific types of thyroid cancers in a separate module, but I'd just like to have you have this framework in the back of your mind as we work through this thyroid nodule algorithm. Without further ado, let's begin our discussion of the thyroid nodule, which in the majority of patients is going to be asymptomatic and is simply going to be an incidental finding on physical exam or on imaging. In the case of thyroid nodules, which are hyperfunctioning, these nodules can present with hyperthyroidism. Additionally, if the nodule compresses local structures, such as the trachea or the esophagus, this can lead to several distinct symptoms, including dysphagia, dyspnea, cough, or a sensation of choking. And in the case of thyroid nodules, which represent a malignancy, this can ultimately go on to cause anterior cervical lymphadenopathy. And this is a classic finding in the case of thyroid cancer. As we stated at the start of this module, the real key that we are trying to figure out in the case of a thyroid nodule is, is this lesion benign or does this represent a malignancy and there are some key clues that we have at our disposal which can suggest that a lesion has an increased risk of being malignant. These include if the patient is a female, if the patient has a history of childhood neck radiation, oftentimes they will give you a clue for this on examinations by saying that the patient has a history of lymphoma, which often requires neck radiation as part of therapy. Additionally, if the patient has a radionucleotide scan, which we will discuss in detail in the coming slides, and has minimal uptake, then this suggests that the patient's nodule is a cold nodule, and this means that malignancy is far more likely. Additionally, if the nodule is firm or fixed, this suggests that it has ultimately fixated to surrounding structures, thus suggesting malignant infiltration. Solitary nodules are also more likely to be malignant, in contrast to, for example, toxic multinodular goiter, which is a benign condition. Additionally, if a patient has multiple endocrine neoplasia, especially MEN2A or MEN2B, these patients have an elevated risk of medullary thyroid carcinoma, and therefore these patients are placed at a higher risk of having a malignancy. As we move forward, we also need to have a differential for what we have in our minds when we see a patient with a goiter, which is an enlargement of the thyroid gland that we can appreciate on physical exam. In comparison to a healthy thyroid gland that we have here on the left side of the presentation, we can have a diffuse goiter in which there is smooth and uniform enlargement, or we can have a nodular goiter in which there is the presence of one or more nodules on physical exam within that thyroid gland. In the case of the smooth or diffusely enlarged goiter, our differential is going to include Hashimoto thyroiditis, Graves' disease, pituitary adenomas, especially those which are secreting TSH, which can then stimulate the thyroid gland, as well as iodine deficiency, which is a very common cause of goiter worldwide. This is because in iodine deficiency, we're going to have a decrease in our level of thyroid hormone production, which is going to result in a subsequent increase in our TSH level, thus resulting in stimulation of the thyroid. In contrast, our nodular goiter differential diagnosis includes thyroid cancer, thyroid adenomas, thyroid cysts, as well as toxic multinodular goiter. One of the modalities that we will use in our workup of our patients with thyroid nodules and that you will see in our algorithm is the fine needle aspiration, or FNA, in which we use an ultrasound and then essentially insert a needle in order to extract some cells from the thyroid. This ultimately produces what we can see on the right-hand side of the presentation, which is simply some cells from the thyroid, which we can then stain. However, this is not a true and typical histologic specimen compared to, for example, a true tissue biopsy of the thyroid. Because this is not a full tissue sample, 
The FNA can be used in some cases to diagnose thyroid cancer, for example, in this patient with papillary carcinoma of the thyroid. However, in some cancers, such as follicular carcinoma of the thyroid, this FNA is going to be insufficient, and we are really going to need a tissue biopsy post-surgically in order to clinch the diagnosis. Another important modality that we have in our arsenal in the workup of thyroid nodules is the radioactive iodine uptake test. In this uptake test, the patient is essentially given radioactive iodine with this I131 isotype. We are then able to scan the thyroid in order to look for uptake of this isotype. This will ultimately produce a result like the ones we have here in the center of the presentation where we have this patient who has a normal level of uptake in contrast to this patient here, who clearly has some hyperfunctioning areas of their thyroid consistent with Graves' disease. And using this uptake test, we can determine whether the patient has a hot nodule, for example, in this patient with Graves' disease, or whether the patient has a cold nodule, as we would see in those who have a lack of this high level of uptake. And this is absolutely essential to bear in mind, as these hot nodules, like the ones we see here for Graves' disease, have a far lower likelihood of being malignant. Just to spell this out a bit more clearly, we should be able to generate a differential based on whether we see a hot nodule on this radioactive iodine uptake test or a cold nodule. In the case of a hot nodule, these are very, very rarely going to be malignant. We are going to see this reflected in our algorithm for the workup of thyroid nodules. Hot nodules include things like functioning adenomas, as well as thyroiditis. In contrast, in the case of cold nodules, 20% of these lesions are going to be malignant, and therefore these cold nodules often will require further workup, oftentimes with a fine needle aspiration, or FNA. Examples of cold nodules include non-functioning adenomas, cysts, fibrosis, multinodular goiter, and of course, malignancy. One last topic that we must cover before we go into our algorithm is thyroid ultrasound features. Ultimately, we are able to use the findings that we have on ultrasound to help us determine is this likely to be a benign thyroid lesion or a malignant thyroid lesion. In the case of benign thyroid nodules, these tend to be isoechoic or hyperechoic. They are often classically purely cystic lesions. If they have calcifications present, these tend to be coarse calcifications. Especially in the case of purely cystic lesions, classically benign thyroid nodules will have a thin, clearly defined halo. They will have regular margins, are less likely to be vascular, will have no lymphadenopathy, and classically, the width of benign thyroid nodules will be greater than their height. All of these features are in contrast to thyroid nodules which are more likely to be malignant. On ultrasound, these malignant lesions tend to be hypoechoic, non-cystic, have the presence of microcalcifications, have a thick or an absent halo, have irregular margins, tend to be highly vascular, will classically have lymphadenopathy, especially in the presence of malignancy, and their height is classically greater than their width. And therefore, in question stems, when you look at the features that the question writers give you in the context of a thyroid ultrasound, be sure to pick up on whether this is more likely to be a benign or a malignant thyroid nodule based on these key features. And what's also pretty remarkable about these features is that many of these can be applied to other nodules, for example, lung nodules, including the calcifications, the vascularity, as well as the margins of the lesions, often these are preserved across various types of nodules and other organ systems of the body. Without further ado, let's jump into our algorithm for the workup of a solitary thyroid nodule. And one way that I find it very helpful to think about this is that there are essentially two pathways which lead us towards the necessity of getting a sample with the fine needle aspiration, or the FNA. So we will go through each of these pathways individually and then bring this all together into one single algorithm. Breaking this algorithm apart into its key components, we first start by having a patient with a thyroid nodule. And the first step in the case of a thyroid nodule is to get an ultrasound of the thyroid as well as a TSH level. If that TSH is low, then our next step is to get a radionucleotide scan. 
If the radionucleotide scan shows a hot nodule, then we simply treat that patient's underlying hyperthyroidism as this is often the cause of these hot nodules, for example, in the case of Graves' disease. However, if we get that radionucleotide scan and we find that the nodule is not hot, then our next step is going to be to get a fine needle aspiration, or an FNA. There is, however, a second pathway by which we can arrive at getting this FNA, as if we perform our ultrasound and our TSH, and the patient has a normal or a high TSH, then we need to take a look at the thyroid ultrasound and ask the question, is this ultrasound concerning for malignancy? There are two key criteria that can ultimately push us in this direction of saying, yes, this ultrasound is indeed concerning, and these are ultimately based off the malignant features that we discussed in our previous slide. We can answer this question with, yes, the ultrasound is concerning for malignancy if the nodule is greater than one centimeters and has calcifications, irregular margins, and internal vascularity, or if the lesion is a non-cystic nodule that is greater than two centimeters. If we answer no to this question, then we can simply monitor that nodule over time for changes in size or symptoms. However, if we answer yes, that this ultrasound is indeed concerning for malignancy, then we ultimately arrive at this step of getting the fine needle aspiration, or FNA. Bringing this all together, once we arrive at this step of getting an FNA from either of these two distinct pathways, then ultimately the results of the FNA are going to determine our next step in management. If the FNA has benign findings, then we can simply continue to monitor the patient. If the FNA shows a malignancy, then ultimately this patient is going to need surgery, often with the use of a partial thyroidectomy or a complete thyroidectomy. More on this in our modules on thyroid cancer. If the patient has an inadequate specimen, then we can simply repeat the FNA. And if the patient has an FNA that is indeterminate, then we can get a radioactive scan of the thyroid. One exception to this rule, however, is in the case of follicular cells on the FNA, as if we see the presence of follicular cells on the fine needle aspiration, then ultimately we are going to need a tissue biopsy in order to clinch the diagnosis of what is potentially a follicular carcinoma of the thyroid. However, generally speaking, for the purposes of your examinations, if you can take a look at a patient with a thyroid nodule and know these first steps of the ultrasound and the TSH, and then ultimately follow these pathways, depending on whether the patient has low TSH or a normal to high level, then you should be in excellent shape for answering all questions related to thyroid nodules for the purposes of your examinations. This is Boards MD, and this is Thyroid Nodule.